In today's Blender tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys step-by-step step how to make a butter with a butter tray scene and a little bit of a butter knife. Um, I don't know why I made this. I just thought it's something cool to make, making some food stuff. So if you guys wanna learn how to do this, I'm gonna take you step-by-step through the process. I will just be modeling this really simple little butter tray. We're gonna be sculpting some butter, which is super easy. It's gonna take like a minute making a simple butter knife and then kind of just rendering it all together. So if you guys wanna learn how to make this, keep watching and um, I will be uploading this to my Patreon as well. So let's jump into it and I hope you guys enjoy. So with the new scene open up in Blender, we're gonna select all of the default objects and we're gonna press delete. We're gonna go shift A under our mesh options. Let's go over and add in a circle. And then with the circle here, we're gonna tab into edit mode and with our vertex select option here, what we're gonna do is with everything active, we're gonna go E to extrude and then S to scale. For now, just a little bit like this. And then let's select this outer edge. So shift alt, left click on this edge here, E to extrude and Z. So let's bring it up like so. And let's just give it a little bit of a scale by pressing S. And what we're making here is just a little uh, tray. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of lift this up a little bit, just a little bit and E to extrude S to scale. And let's go once again, E to extrude, S to scale, and let's go press F to fill that. We're then gonna come over here, Control R, to get the loop, and we're gonna left click twice, and then we're gonna right click to let go. We're gonna go Alt S with that active, and just kind of scale it out a little bit along the normals. And then let's go Shift Alt, left click on this edge here, and go Control B, and just give it a light bevel, like so. Now what we have as our little uh, tray here, we're gonna go over to our modifiers. Let's give this a solidify modifier and let's give it some thickness. So I'm gonna go out this way a little bit. So I'm going into the negatives here. It really depends on which direction your normals are facing. You can always go A to select everything, Alt N and then go recalculate outside. And so in this case, I think if we go over here to our display, we go down enable normals, we can see our normals are pointing out, which is kind of what we want, so that's all good. Um, anyway, so we're gonna go now to our modifiers, let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. And now we can still control our thickness, let's go with maybe something like that. And the tab back out, I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth, so we're back in object mode. So now we have this here, what we could do is instead of modeling the top part as a separate thing, we could always just go into edit mode and then just go shift Alt and left click, select this top edge over here, going around like this, and we can go Shift D to duplicate, right click to let go, and let's go P and let's go separate selection, tab back out, and now let's select that duplication over here. As you can see, tab into edit mode for that, and now we can select everything by pressing A, E to extrude, and Z, and we're gonna extrude up. Let's go about this high, and then we're gonna press F to fill that. And for now, let's just turn off in the viewport display, our modifiers. And let's go Control B to bevel, so Control B to make a bevel. Let's roll the middle mouse button and now let's round it out. So I'm gonna go about that much. And then we're gonna select Shift Alt, left click on this edge here, E to extrude, as to scale. And at this point, you can make this however you want. I'm gonna scale it a bit. I'm gonna extrude up on the Z, so E to extrude, as to scale. And you can make a little kind of holder a little knob to kind of grab onto. So I'm gonna go something like that. Just a few extrusions. You can make yours however you want. I'm gonna go Control B to make a bevel and just give it a bit of a bevel like that. And uh, I might actually grab this edge here and just bevel it. Um, you guys can do this however you want. I'm just gonna make a very simple one like this. I'm gonna tab back out. And I'm gonna enable these modifiers again. Now you can see we do have a little bit of an issue over here. So what we can go do is we can go into edit mode again and let's just turn on the cage on display for both of those modifiers. And let's just come over here and go Control R, you can see the yellow line, let's just left click once, drag that down and just add in a segment like that, just to tighten it up here. Tab back out and then let's go right click and then go Shade Smooth. So now we have these two bits. I might actually just in object mode, scale this guy down a little bit so it could actually fit inside of here. I'm just gonna bring it down. And now we have that, okay? So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna grab the bottom one and we're gonna to go to the modifiers. Let's just apply those modifiers, both of them. Let's select the top one and let's also apply both of the modifiers. We're then gonna tab into edit mode and this bit is optional, but you can make a little decorative feature by maybe selecting an edge in here, then going control B just to bevel it. And then you can go 
Control R in the middle, roll your middle mouse button just once, and then double click, and then go S, Z, and scale it up on the Z. And now you've got these two edges, you can go Control B just to bevel them slightly. And then you can go E to extrude, right click, and then go Alt S, and scale in along the normals like this. And now you have kind of like this decorative feature running in here. You could always add, um, select these two edges over here, and then just give them a slight bevel, like so. And this just kind of gives this little inlay here, which is optional, but I think that's a cool kind of thing to add to this. But now we have the, the two elements here, the two main elements. I'm just gonna move them both up a little bit so they're sitting on the floor. So let's actually select this lid here. Let's go G to move it and let's move it over. Let's just rotate it. And you can place this however you want. So I'm gonna go into my right view maybe, maybe move it over here. It's completely up to you guys how you wanna place it. I'm just gonna place mine like this. Um, you can spend as much time or as little time as you want. I'm just gonna try and adjust it, pl place it here. Okay, something like that looks okay. And then we're gonna add in our butter. So we're gonna go Shift A, we're just gonna add in the default cube. And then we're gonna go into edit mode and let's just scale this guy down this much. And let's go into our front view and just move it up like so. And in our right orthographic, let's go S, Y and scale it along the Y. You can make this however size you want. I might just bring this top face down and move it up a little bit. Maybe scale it down and uh, tab back out and let's just move it over a little bit, maybe rotate it. Just get a block like this. We're gonna um, sculpt it in a second anyway, but what we mainly want is it just to be sitting neatly on our plate here. And then what we can do, we can select this, we can make sure that the scale is applied. So Control A, apply the scale, just in case you've scaled it in the object mode. And then go over to your sculpting with that active. Then under your active tool settings here, let's just go down and enable dynamic topology, click OK. And now we're gonna to come to our, under our dynamic topology. Let's make the detail size five. Let's go to our clay um, strips brush over here. And let's just go with a medium strength here. Let's just go and sculpt kind of just around the edges of the butter like this. And you can bring down the strength if you need to. We're just gonna go around the edges like this. And then here at the front, keeping it very simple like this. Just kind of giving it an organic shape. And then holding in shift, you can just slightly smooth out the ends. So just very lightly. So give it some texture and ends. Holding in shift, just give it a smooth. And then do that all the way around like this. So I'm just smoothing it out. And then over here, we can add a few strips. Just make it look like it's an organic shape. We don't want it to look too square. Maybe add a few strips here. Holding in shift, just smooth it a little bit and then give it some strips here at the top. Just make it look a little bit uneven. Hold in shift and just lightly smooth that out as well. And then here at the back, maybe smooth it out here. Give this a smooth, something like that. You guys kind of get the idea here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab, we'll go back into our layout here. I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. So now we have our butter here and it's looking a lot more organic. And one more thing we can add that's really gonna make this look cool is a butter knife. So we can go Shift A. Let's just add in a plane and let's just move this plane up like so. Tab into edit mode and let's go R, X, 9, 0 and press enter. Let's scale this down like this and then go S, X and scale it a little bit. And let's select this edge over here. So I'm gonna go to my edge select and select this edge. Now I'm gonna go E to extrude, scale it up bring it up a bit and then go S to scale it. So something like this, and then let's go E to extrude it out to about here. Then go Control R and roll in a few segments, about this much. Left click twice, and let's just grab these faces here and or these edges, let's just bring them down a bit. And then do the same thing over here, Control R, roll your middle mouse button and add in some segments. Just grab these edges and slightly bring them down. Then Control R, let's add in a cut here. Left click twice. And let's grab the vertex option, move this out a bit. And what we're trying to do here is just make a simple looking knife shape. Um, butter knives are a bit rounded, so I'm just gonna grab these ends here, bring them in. 
and something like that should be okay. Then we're going to go A to select everything, E to extrude. Let's extrude that out. And let's go to our top view and in wireframe, let's just select these front verts over here and then go S, Y and flatten them a little bit on the Y just to make them skinnier. Then we can come over here and go Control R, left click to add in a loop and then go G, X and just move it like so, just to kind of tighten that up a little bit. Tab back out and let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. Bump it up for both of the viewport and the render. Right click and go shade smooth. And now we have a very simple butter knife as well. So we're gonna grab this guy and we're just gonna take it down and you can scale it to whatever size you want, but I'm gonna rotate mine like this. And I might just come at the top here and just rotate it like this and maybe just stick it halfway into the butter like that and then bring it down. You guys can do whatever you want. I'm gonna go something like that. Okay, something really simple, maybe bring it down a bit. I'm gonna leave it there. And now we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a plane, scale that plane way up, Control A and apply that scale. And then let's add in a camera. So we can go Shift A, add in a camera. And with that camera active, we're just gonna move it up, move it back, and we're gonna to go to our camera settings. Let's give this a focal length of 120. And let's go into our camera view. And with your camera active, you can press G to move it. You can also go G and then press your middle mouse button to zoom. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate your camera, and this is completely up to you by the way, but if you make this over here 3D cursor under the pivot transform, you can double tap R and rotate your camera around the, R, the um, 3D cursor here. And that just gives you the ability to very easily kind of get a pose. So I'm gonna go with something maybe like this, give it a bit of rotation, maybe Try this angle, you can do whatever it is you want. I'm gonna go with, yeah, maybe something like that. I'll go with something like that. I might just grab my knife and rotate it around, maybe place it over here. Yeah, something like that looks cool. It's completely up to you how you wanna do this. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go Control B and just drag over our camera. This is gonna limit our rendering to our camera view. And I might just bring my camera in a little bit closer. Now let's go to our render settings and let's make this cycles. Let's also go to our max samples under the render and make it 90. And let's now go shift A. Let's go to our light options. Let's add in an area light, G, Z and move it up. And let's go to our light settings and let's give that 120 on the strength. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we're gonna see we have some nice lighting. I might make it 300. In this case, it really depends on the scale of your objects. I might make the size of it three meters. And at this point, I'm just gonna make some two basic lights here. I'm gonna rotate this one in and then go Shift D, duplicate it and rotate another one in like this. Now we have just kind of like two points of lighting. And then I'm gonna to go to my world settings and give this under the color. I'm gonna go and give that a sky texture and then take the strength down to 0.3. Now you could use a HDRI if you wanted to, we can stick with this. In my case, I'll probably just add in an environment texture, but you can stick to the sky texture if you want. So I've got some HRIs on my computer and I'll just choose one that I particularly like. So I'm gonna grab that one. The main thing is we just want some lighting. We're then going to select our main butter tray object. We're gonna go into our shading workspace and in our camera view with the rendered mode on, we're gonna give that a new material and I'm gonna make mine a simple kind of orange material. I'm gonna bring down the roughness. Then I'm gonna select this bottom tray and I'm gonna to come to the drop down and give it that same material. And let's grab our butter for now and go new. Let's just actually call it butter. And this time we're gonna give it a nice yellowish kind of material, something like that. Bring down the roughness, but not too much. And that's about it. Let's select our knife here and go new. Let's make it metallic on the material here and bring down the roughness. And let's go and give that a bit of a darker color. Now, if you wanna make this look even better, you can give these things some textures. So what I'm gonna do, if you actually go to the internet and you go to a website called Polyhaven, just type in Polyhaven and you can go to their textures. And then you can go under the drop down to wood. And they have all of these sort of wood options here. 
Now you can download any one of these you want. I downloaded this dark wood material. And when you download it, it just downloads a zip folder that comes with a blend file. And all you're gonna do is inside of Blender, once you've downloaded that and extracted it, you can go to File, Append, and then find that specific blend file on your computer. So I already know where I placed mine. I'm just gonna find it. So I have it now here. I'm gonna click on the blend file and then you're gonna go into the materials folder and just click on whatever your material is. Then you can select your floor over here, come to the drop down, and then give it your wooden material. Now if you go Z and you go rendered, you're gonna see you have a nice wooden floor. In this case, we can also go Shift A, add in an empty, give it a cube. Let's just place it towards the front of our items here. And this is a neat little trick. Then you can select your camera and you can go to your camera settings, enable depth of field. And with this little eyedropper, you can click on that empty object and then bring your f-stop down. And now it's focusing on this empty here and you can easily adjust it. So now we have a nice little scene here. Let's make sure to save. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. And let's go render and then go render image. And here we have it. We now have some butter with our butter tray here and our knife. And if you wanna make this look even more realistic, I'll show you my original here. The original I made is the exact same. All I did is I spent a little bit more time with the materials. I actually went into my shading and I added in a noise texture into my roughness. And this is a very simple setup and you guys could easily do this. And it just adds a little bit of roughness and texture. But other than that, what I've shown you here today is the exact same tutorial. So I hope you guys are able to take this and turn it into something really cool. I will be uploading this blend file to my Patreon and I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.